Welcome to Affiliate Buzz, the longest running program on affiliate marketing. James and Arlene Martell are here to inspire, inform, and motivate you with expert insight, interviews, and information that will increase your bottom line. Advance your affiliate marketing efforts every week on Affiliate Buzz. Now, please welcome James and Arlene. Yes, it's James Martell here, and welcome to edition number 406 of the Affiliate Buzz, where we've been keeping affiliates inspired, informed, and motivated to succeed with affiliate programs since way back in 2003. If you're joining us live here today on Cranberry Radio, it's great to have you with us. If you happen to be joining us through a podcast on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or maybe your Wi-Fi radio, a very special welcome to you as well. Arlene is away today, however, not to worry. I am joined by Adam Reimer, winner of the 2016 Affiliate Summit Pinnacle Award for Affiliate Manager of the Year. And today we're going to talk with Adam and ask him to share some of his secrets for generating sales with social media. Adam is a affiliate marketing industry veteran with a stellar track record for managing top of the funnel and value adding affiliate programs. Adam is a much sought after speaker and has spoken at numerous uh, industry events, including Affiliate Summit, PubCon, State of Search, and the Share of Sale Think Tank. Adam, welcome to the Affiliate Buzz. Hey, thank you for having me. Hey, it's so good to have you back on. It's been a, it's been a while. Always good to catch up. And uh, I know you, before we got on the call here, uh, you were mentioning that uh, you're in uh, Washington, I think, Washington, D.C.? Yep. Uh, yep. Right in downtown. There you go. <laughs> and you've been, uh, that's definitely uh, a lot going on in Washington these days. And this is the Canadian looking into uh, the fishbowl. And I'm usually the guy that has one of the news stations on, or I posted on my Facebook page uh, yesterday that I love to watch the uh, the White House daily briefing. And that's always funny being a Canadian and all. And I'm just happy I don't do anything with politics work-wise. <laughs> uh, there's four groups of people we will never take on as clients. And it's real estate agents, politicians, lawyers. And um, I try to stay away from most nonprofits. There you go. It's funny you mentioned realtors as well because I'm the same. They're so... Now, let's not get into it, but same, same idea. Same, I love same realtors. Idea. Um, the, actually, a family that's in real estate, but uh, they're just not good clients normally. Yeah. Um, for long-term growth channels, for short-term growth or things like Facebook ads or something, they're always great. Um, but it, the, they usually have a real, had a really bad experience because people just don't know how to use the ad platform or people are just lazy and don't properly target or they just set up the wrong conversions uh, cycles. So that's the issue they've had. But for things like SEO, I just I don't work with them at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. It's so you've been in the industry. It's a results type of thing, and that just doesn't happen with organic. No, definitely, especially these days. Now, you've, of course, been in the industry for many, many years, and you and I have crossed paths at conferences for probably over a decade now. And we've had the chance to chat a number of times. You've had you on the show it's before. Old. <laughs> uh, no, it just it just happens to be a matter of fact. I hate to break it to you. Uh, that's all right. When I met you, uh, we had no grandkids, and now I have four, and our, all of our kids were home, and now they're all moved out on their own. So, uh, so maybe I am calling you old. So, <laughs> bastard. Uh, so, hey, take take us back. T- tell us, give us, give us uh, your history in the industry, uh, and take a couple minutes if you would kind of bring us up to date on uh, on how you got started, and then bring us current. Uh, how I got started, I was basically DJing at raves when I was a teenager, and people were asking where I was spinning next. And so I eventually put up um, some really bad subdomain sites. Um, in about 98 or 99, I put up a bunch of Angel Fire sites as well. And I started to see traffic come in, and I eventually, this is like the really short version. And uh, I also put together a spreadsheet with email addresses for people that actually had them then. And I learned how to use mail merge and I would do email blasts that way. I also uh, saw traffic coming in from Lycos and uh, I wanted to know how to get more. So I found a forum called Cosmos Factory, which was for Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm -hmm. And there was a small section for webmasters and SEO. Um, fast forward years later, I had already made some money online. I started shopping at a record store called Dance Grooves in the Netherlands. So I became familiar with a little bit of e-commerce and I uh, actually found them through a DJ called Ollie J out of the UK uh, when he was uh, touring with John the Dentist. And 
Um, that's kind of how that went. Went to college, which was a huge waste of time and money. And after college, I joined the corporate world um, and eventually found A Best Web. And that's where I got to meet people like Kelly Stevens, who taught me about adware and how to do testing, as well as good players in the industry, bad players in the industry, and lots and lots of other stuff, including some of the people that I consider best friends now. Yeah, it's so, amazing. Uh, one thing led to another. Yeah, and we talked about this also before that we got on the call here is that uh, how interesting it is that we've been going to, especially with Philly at Summit, you, I know you attend a lot of events that I don't because you just happen to be in the middle of it all being in Washington, D.C. and a short flight away to so much, so I'm jealous on that. But we talked about how when we get down to especially Summit, there's a really core group of people. You mentioned friends, and I find that as well. How many people that I've had a chance to get to know over the years where we still get together every time we go down to Affiliate Summit, and whether it was being with uh, Brian Littleton playing uh, the piano late at night where he always seems to manage to find a uh, grand piano somewhere, and we all do a sing-along until the wee hours of the morning. And uh, But what a, what a great bunch of people, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a weird mix where you're not supposed to mix work with friends. But Missy Ward's been here. I've stayed at her house before when I went to visit Florida. Um, I went out, actually, when she was here last time, we went out drinking with Sean Collins' brother um, and sister-in-law. Uh, let's see, I was just with Vanessa in New York. Uh, and Chris Boggs is coming over to my condo later because he's in town visiting. And yeah, it's just become this weird mix of friends and work, but it just sort of also works. It does. It does. Hey, now you mentioned Lycos, and I, I remember the early days as well uh, with you know, Lycos, Excite.com, Webcrawler. Alta remember good old Alta Vista uh, and the early days of search. And of course, we all kind of cut our teeth back then uh, in various ways. But so, so much of it was similar because there really wasn't that many ways to make money online back then, not like today. Uh, but fast forward to today, and we want to talk about social media and generating sales through social media because it is a bit of a different animal compared to search to put it mildly so uh, kind of tee that up for us if you will uh, i think probably we're going to talk a lot about facebook but you know let, let's kind of dig into this whole area sure um and do you want affiliate specific or uh, yeah affiliate specific or just in general as well because i think you know whether it's an affiliate whether we're, we're, we're promoting for somebody else or we're promoting for ourselves it's very similar yeah to an extent um so there's a few things before you do anything you have to know what your website experience is and so there's some sites where there's lots and lots of customization that occurs. So you have to first check the code on the site to make sure you have the right input fields into the forms for a proper mobile experience, or that could be one of the reasons why your mobile's not performing well. If your mobile's not doing well and you're not using the Facebook ads platform where you can select do not show to mobile devices, then you're going to get a lot of mobile users coming specifically off of social media sites, including like Instagram, you know, because barely anyone's probably using that off of a desktop. Uh, it would be fairly shocking if a large portion of Instagram was that. Uh, so as, for, as far as social media goes, you need to have a good mobile experience, and you then need to go a step further and have cross-device tracking set up if you really want to properly start to gauge things. Um, cross-device tracking means if they come in off their phone, but they need to do some more research and they finish the shopping experience on their computer or on a tablet instead, or vice versa. And there's a few ways to set it up. They all get uh, pretty technical later on. Uh, the easiest thing you can do is collect some sort of unique identifier, like an email address or a name and a zip code, and match them up. And you tag a database, and anytime that's used at the checkout, then you credit the original source or channel, or you credit it back to the attribution line from each of the touch points where they had a login or that was recognized. And so as long as, like, if you have a login from a social media account, you can have that be a recognizable attribute to, regardless of device because they've re-logged in um, or they've re-engaged through the identifier that you have. And so now you can properly attribute that across multiple channels. Um, so you have to have that set up too. So once you have uh, 
again, if you're not using the ad platforms where you can target uh, by device type, uh, then you're now set up to actually start to promote things through uh, free and follower and fan page accounts on social media. Um, after that, it's all about knowing who your audience is and that's not knowing, okay, well it's mostly women or it's mostly men or chihuahuas that click like on my stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's knowing their age range, knowing, are they urban? Are they suburban? Are they in the country? It's knowing this is their income. Do they have kids? Do they not have kids? Are they gay? Are they straight? Are they gay friendly? Do they vote Democrat? Do they vote Republican? Are they libertarians? It's knowing all of this. Because if you're an affiliate, for example, and you have a merchant and you have two merchants that have the same exact products around the same price, but they have very different website experiences, uh, you want to pick the one that provides the experience more relevant. If the merchant will share their customer demographics, you can match that up to your own. And you also may find that different people are logged in at different times of the day. So if you have a male and a female split, uh, maybe, or no, so if you have people that are in relationships and uh, it's a it's a half and half split and only one person in that household works, there could be a chance that the people uh, that are on in the day are the partner that doesn't have a job and the people that are on at night are the people that do have jobs that are engaging with you. It doesn't mean that it's male or female or whatever. It just means that your daytime traffic is there because that's when they're bored and they don't have anyone else at home. And the nighttime traffic is because that's when they're free and they don't have it. And that's when they have the ability to see what you've been up to. And so you want to market to them differently. So if you're going to share something, you know, the engagement takes a couple hours to really start taking off because of share and there's one merchant that does better with the working crowd versus the stay-at-home crowd, then that could work. Another thing is if you have women um, or if you have gay men, for example, and you take them to a landing page, and the landing page and you're targeting gay men, I just wrote a big article about targeting on that for one of the CPA networks. And mm -hmm. I was like, if you're going to drive gay men in off of a diet product, you don't want to show women and you don't want to show families at the beach. Instead, you want to show a handsome guy or you want to show a gay couple on the beach that's also in shape and you want to talk to them. At the same time, you probably don't want to show that to a conservative right-wing activist because that's not going to be very appealing to them. So you need to match the, your social demographics to the merchant's landing pages and to the offers. You also have to make sure that the merchants are also set up with a good mobile experience as well as cross-device and yeah, a good yeah. desktop experience. Otherwise, you have a good chance of not tracking your commissions through. You know, I've had some great conversations uh, with Todd Crawford on the show here and Matt Freire and Lisa Riolo about attribution and cross-device tracking and how powerful it's been these days or how, uh, how powerful it is to be able to track just about everything you can possibly imagine. And you've rattled off a large number of them there already. And technically how much more savvy we need to be these days than we did. If you think back to the early days when you got started and same with myself, how we didn't have any of this. We didn't, we were basically flying by the seat of our pants. We didn't really know what we were doing as far as tracking in a lot of ways. And we didn't have the ability, even if we did to track because the data just wasn't there. So today it's a whole different animal. Uh, you mentioned, you know, of course, having a good mobile experience, not only on our own websites, but when we pass them through to the merchant, how important, that is uh, cross device tracking whether they come in on their mobile phone as you, you suggested maybe they find you there but they got to do some more research and then uh, they may they may finish that off when they get uh, you know back home on their desktop where they're a little bit more comfortable and have some more time and then knowing who your audience is uh, as well so let's do this let's I could see we're up against the break when we get back I want to dig into this deeper and I want to kind of bring this to the point where you've been talking about different ad platforms and how we can Make this maybe a little more simpler or, or where we can find some help on getting these types of things done and, uh, and more. So, uh, again, I'm here with Adam Reimer, winner of the 2016 Affiliate Summit Pinnacle Award for Affiliate Manager of the Year. And when we get back, we'll dig into all that and more. More affiliate buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. How much are your best ideas worth? PriorThings.com gives you an added layer of protection for all of your intellectual property. 
ideas, and creative things. New business idea, pitch deck, PowerPoint presentation, song lyrics, source code, killer blog posts. We help you protect it all. How do we do it? We use the same technology platform that secures transactions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Learn more at PriorThings.com. Check out exclusive listener pricing for Cranberry Radio listeners by going to bit.ly slash Founder Circle. Is your website hacked? Is your website displaying error messages or loading slowly? Even if there are no signs of malicious activity, your site may still be compromised. Websites, like cars, require regular maintenance to perform at their best and not leave you stranded. At Fjord, our website maintenance experts can help you assess which one of our maintenance plans will best support your needs. Visit FjordDigital.com or call 612-877-3840 and get the support and protection your website and business deserve. That's F-J-O-R-G-E Digital.com. Looking for a white-label SEO and social platform for your clients? Think eBrands. Free and unlimited SEO audit reports. eBrands. Premium Facebook apps and welcome page creators. eBrands. Twitter management app, analytics, and mobile site generators. eBrands. Let eBrands manage your search and social media campaigns and give you and your clients access to their white-label dashboard, which have great reports that will wow your clients and deliver great ROI and results. Try eBrands for 30 days. Go to ebrandswithaz.com or call 1-866-625-5717. That's ebrands with a Z for ebrands. Where affiliate marketing gets its buzz and mobile has its presence. Cranberry Radio, online anytime at cranberry.fm. Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz. Here's James and Arlene. Marine is the way today. However, I'm here with Adam Reimer, winner of the 2016 Affiliate Summit Pinnacle Award for Affiliate Manager of the Year. And we're talking about the secrets for generating online sales with uh, social media. Now, Adam, before the break, you, you've, you've pretty much laid out a case for how important it is to have stellar tracking in place. And for those who may be swimming a little bit in their heads on how in the world they're going to figure this out, of course, there's services uh, and tools, all kinds of things that are available in the affiliate space from affiliate management companies such as yourself to just a variety of things. How would you suggest somebody begins to tackle this? I have a tech team that's open to doing it uh, and that's smart. (laughs) <laughs> but basically, you just need to, it's really just going to depend. Almost everything has some sort of unique thing uh, that goes into it. The main thing you need to do is find a way that you can get your website visitors to give you some sort of unique identifier, and then you just have to be able to tag that in the database and also feed it back automatically to the tracking platforms and properly att- attribute it. So speak, if you would, to this idea of the unique identifier. It can be an email address. It can be a variety of things. In layman's you terms, be careful great because you can't use names because a lot of people have the same names. But you can use a name with a zip code. That's going to give you a lot more unique. An email address is probably only used by one person, unless it's like a marketing ad or affiliate set. Um, so, but you just need that unique, uh, going in through a social network though, that's going to give some unique tags because that's your individual account that it's passing information from. And that may actually just be using your email address or it can be using like your unique login name for the website. There's a lot of them. It just has to be a truly unique parameter or at least a mostly unique one. And then, of course, you need this so you can begin to track things properly. And this gets back to the whole area of attribution and just making sure. Now, for for those that are not quite familiar with attribution, take us through that, if you would, again. You, you, you briefly went through it, but what is attribution? So attribution is making sure you properly credit the channels that add, had a value adding or reasonable touch point in the sale process. So, for example, uh, we'll just go with an e-commerce one, then we'll do an affiliate example. An e-commerce one, somebody goes to Google, how do I, uh, wait, what's the best um, bike out there? 
and then they find a bunch of bikes. Then, so they clicked on a PPC ad. Then they looked at the different stores and like, okay, well, so then they type in the bike's name once they find the one they want. Then they go to like five or six different stores that have that bike after they search by the name. And so now you had a PPC touch point and you had um, an SEO touch point. Then maybe, you know, we're still not exactly sure. We found it at the right price. So let me just read some reviews on it. Then they go and they find a review site that's comparing that bike to another bike or because maybe they found a second bike. The review site then is the one that made the deal close. They were like that final deciding factor and they go back. That review site could also be an affiliate. So now you have a fourth touch point in the funnel. You know that the review helped, but now you also have to pay an affiliate commission, which is fine in this case. They're still adding value to your sales funnel. Um, and they could also introduce you if the person wasn't at your store first, but that's the retailer, the review site trust, then that just gave you the sale and that became a top of funnel sale for you. Sorry about getting distracted on there. So yeah, no. now you have four touch points. Uh, the person gets to your site and is, and you close the sale or they see a coupon code box. They leave for Google, type in your URL plus coupons, find one. That didn't actually add value. I've tested this many, many times, and I've never seen that add value when it wasn't introducing and interacting with the actual sales process. The end of sale, I've never found that to add value. There was Actually, that's a lie. There was one merchant I worked with when I was doing an audit, and in one case, it was actually helping to close the sales, but the amount that it didn't help close way outweighed the amount that it did, so we ended up deciding to part ways. Um, but basically, now you have five touch points. One of them didn't add value, the others did. So you wanna properly attribute those. Then you can start testing them more and more. So maybe you want to get some more reviews in there, or maybe you wanna up the PPC spend to get that initial um, sales funnel going in. So by upping the PPC, do you get more SEO out of it? Do you get more people through the review site? Okay, so maybe we do. Now let's. Uh, so then you, you can also remove certain channels, like you can remove the review sites maybe, or maybe they get wiped in Google, but you notice the sales are staying about the same. Maybe that review site didn't actually add value at that point. There's just different ways you can test it. I've been up since 3 in the morning Eastern, and it's now 5.26 p.m., so my brain's a little <laughs> dead. But that's like the basic thing is you try to figure out how, who's actually adding value, who's not. Or maybe it started with an organic search, then the person came back through a query about um, where can I find a good price on XYZ bike or XYZ product, and they click through your link again. Then they did a trademark search later because they really liked your website experience. So now you have three touch points, but which one of those touch points from the PPC ads actually closed the sale and added value? So you can start by removing ad groups or lowering the bids and seeing how that's still converting and if it's impacting and where you're getting money back to invest into other channels. The, so the, that's attribution testing in yeah. a basic, basic form. Now, you mentioned <laughs> coupon sites uh, in its basic form, I know. That's the scary thing about where this industry is at. It's, uh, pretty soon we're going to need to be hiring a few rocket scientists and some, uh, if we're not already. Um, so, But coupon sites, let's kind of go there for a minute because a lot of my students still are talking about coupon sites. And I'm like, I've never had one, not really a coupon site kind of guy. I have my own way of doing things. But some people still lead to that, and they're still considering it. But you and I have watched the coupon sites go really well for a long time, and then all of a sudden, recently, I don't think they're doing so well. Well, it just depends. As merchants get smarter, they start removing the coupon sites from their programs unless they're adding value. A coupon site can add value in numerous ways, but it doesn't make sense for them to do this for most merchants, especially if they don't know. For example, a coupon site may have a very large following, like Brad's deals on social media. I engage regularly with their links, and I've actually shopped through one when they share on Facebook because they shared stuff that actually interested me. So that's adding value to the merchants that I click through because I wasn't planning on going to their site. Um, another way they can do it is through newsletters, uh, but they can't continuously email merch the same merchants to their audience and they'll kill their list. Another way, which is good for one, bad for another, um, is, and I just wrote about this with a client announcement on my blog, was, um, so I'm in the tickets industry with one client. And 
if they would show up for the client's URL plus the word coupons, this would be very bad for my client. But if they would show up for share ticket coupons or Lady Gaga ticket coupons, we are just doing affiliate recruitment for both of those. We are also doing MMA. So if it would be the McGregor versus Mayweather fight coupons or deals, then that's going to be really good for my client because it's top of funnel for the client. But it's really bad for Cher and Madonna and Lady Gaga and it's bad for the MMA and it's bad for Kenny Chesney because we're taking away from their uh, closing their sales and driving it somewhere else. Um, that does not work with a lot of e-commerce sites, but it does work in fluid uh, niches like this. Or if it's a generic brand, then that could work where there's no real brand loyalty. And it's I know for who has it in stock and who has it at the best price at this point. So that would be top of the funnel. So there are a lot of ways that you can work with a coupon site, but the coupon site is probably also going to want to try to rank for your URL plus the word coupons because that's where their high conversions and their big money can come from. The problem is that's really bad for you as a brand if they're doing that. Yeah. So it's a fine line. You're also, there's people like me that build content sites and have top of the funnel traffic. If we see that, we're not going to want to join your program or we're going to demand double commissions because we know that there's a chance that that could intercept and overwrite our cookies. So now you could always do attribution on that where it would fire the pixel back to the first touch point or the second touch point, but we don't know that when we're just evaluating programs. So you just lost a new source of potential traffic. So there's lots of ways they can add value as long as you work with them smart. So I'm not anti-coupon site no matter what people say. I am just work with them in a very different way than most companies do. How many advertisers would you say nowadays – uh, of course, the big ones probably got it hooked up. But generally speaking, what's been your experience with advertisers and having attribution properly configured? It really just depends who their in-house manager is, what network they're on, or which agency they're working with. So it's still literally probably all over the map, huh? Yeah, uh, there's no guarantees on it, unfortunately. Some of the networks like ShareSale have done a good job about talking about the capabilities. I know Janine Crooks talks a lot about it when she speaks on cross device and attribution. Todd Crawford most certainly has talked a lot from Impact Radius. Chad from AvantLink has, I believe, been talking about it a lot recently. Um, so it really just depends on the network. Other networks, you're probably not going to hear anything about yeah. it. Uh, some of them are just dinosaurs, and they're not going to update, and they rely on their brand image. They rely on the fact that they've been around forever, and they rely on their organic rankings to keep their businesses afloat. And they now, rely I mean, on merchants to put in people that don't know how to properly look for things. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's going to be a big mess, and I couldn't even give you a percentage uh, or guesstimate that would be remotely accurate. Now, I'm here with Adam Reimer, winner of the 2016 Affiliate Summit Pinnacle Award for Affiliate Manager of the Year. And when we get back, I'm going to ask Adam to share some of his programs uh, and what he has uh, available for us affiliates. We'll do that and more right after the break. Affiliate Buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. Do you look at the task of ranking your site at the top of the search engines like you would climbing the top of Mount Everest? It doesn't have to be. TopSEOs.com knows how hard that climb can be, and they can make top ranking a reality. Top SEOs send you to only the right search vendors and agencies that they know will work for you. Since 2002, TopSEOs.com has reviewed and researched the best search engine marketing agencies and solutions providers. Don't risk the cost of falling off the proverbial peak of search rankings. Let Top SEOs give you peace of mind. TopSEOs.com, the independent authority on search vendors. Looking for a white-label SEO and social platform for your clients? Think eBrands. Free and unlimited SEO audit reports. eBrands. Premium Facebook apps and welcome page creators. eBrands. Twitter management app, analytics, and mobile site generators. eBrands. Let eBrands manage your search and social media campaigns and give you and your clients access to their white-label dashboard, which have great reports that will wow your clients and deliver great ROI and results. Try eBrands for 30 days. Go to eBrandsWithAZ.com or call 1-866-625-5717. That's eBrands with a Z for eBrands. Synergize your search engine education from 101 to rock star level only on Cranberry Radio. Cranberry.fm. Time now 
to hear some more affiliate buzz. Here's James and Arlene. Yes, I'm here with Adam Reimer, winner of the 2016 Affiliate Summit Pinnacle Award for Affiliate Manager of the Year. And we're talking about the secrets for generating online sales with social media. Uh, now, Adam, let's let's talk a little bit about some of your programs. Of course, you've got things hooked up. We know that. Uh, what do you have? You mentioned tickets. Uh, what else you got on the go? Actually, talk about tickets first, if you would. Oh, they're a new client of mine, um, and basically they're a ticket uh, marketplace where you can find everything from Broadway shows to uh, golf tournaments and golf tours to rock bands and pretty much everything else since the Tickets.Expert program on ShareSale. I also manage the Smug Mug Affiliate Program, which is a resource for photographers to take their business online. They can create a portfolio site. They can sell prints using the e-commerce platform, and it also has a service called Memory Makers for consumers so that they can uh, never lose their photos and have them in a safe and secure place as well as buy um, them on like magnets and coffee mugs and things. I work with a plus-size lingerie company called Hips and Curves. I work with Bachelorette.com, NationalAutismResources.com, ProSource Fitness, which is fitness gear at really, really good prices. I actually have a bunch of their stuff here at my condo. I use their multi-grip pull-up bar. I use their ab wheel and their yoga mat. Um, I also work with Boku and Swoozies. It's, uh, they have over 10,000 party supplies, uh, including wedding favors and decor items, balloons, and some like really cool like stuff. I love their Lego block favors. Hmm. It's just tons and tons of things. They have every type of mason jar you could ever imagine as well for the do-it-yourselfers, including ribbon and burlap. Then they have uh, the, if you ever see me at Affiliate Summit, you'll see I have bride and groom chocolate-covered Oreos. They come from there. I just got my sunglasses to hand out at Affiliate Summit from them that are, uh, they do them branded for the couples. It's like tons and tons of products. I also work with a bulletproof vest company called Bullet Safe. And those are the affiliate programs and giftbasketsoverseas.com affiliate program. Those are all found exclusively on ShareSale. Terrific. Yeah, and you're a big ShareSale fan, as am I. Yeah, uh, ShareSale has been very good to me over the years. I do work with some of the other networks. So I'm not exclusive, but ShareSale has proven themselves time and time again to me, with me as affordable, approachable. They provide very good service. And they offer the most tools at no additional cost, which is really nice. And if you need to get a hold of someone there, they can make sure it's there. Their email response team is always really good. And if you say that's not the answer I was looking for, they'll come back and they'll make sure that they figure it out, whereas some hmm. of the other networks just leave you hanging. So and some of the other networks I find... Me over. Yeah, I find some of the other networks, I won't n mention any names, don't even reply to emails, which I find... <laughs> Quite annoying, but uh, share sales awesome, and they have a great think tank every year where they spoil us uh, rotten. So that's uh, always exactly. good. So, you so know, where Impact Radius has been really nice to me, and the Performance Horizon Group. I haven't never worked with them, but they're on my radar to test out. Uh, that's Charles Calbrice and Kim Salvino. Um, they're the people that I know there, and they've been. I'm really excited to see what they've been doing and what they're up to. Yeah. So I, I share sales, the one I tend to prefer and gravitate towards, but I have put uh, programs on other networks and I've done audits for programs on CJ, on LinkShare, on Link Connector and all the others. It's just, you'll find all of my clients, my preference is share sale, but I will put them on other networks and I'm really excited to see the things Performance Horizon Group's been up to. Where can uh, our good friends and listeners uh, find out more about your programs? Uh, they can go to my blog, adamreamer.me, and it's spelled R-I-E-M as in Matthew, E-R. And you'll also actually find, I just did a recent post on how to promote and track and drive revenue by social media channels, since we didn't really talk about that as much. And you'll find a lot of how-to guides and step-by-step -step guides, as well as things uh, regarding SEO, monetization, and overall strategy there. Wonderful. So, uh, Adam, I want to thank you for joining me. It's been great to, to uh, catch up. Welcome home. Well, thanks. <laughs> and it's nice to talk <laughs> to you again as well. And I'll see you in about a month. Absolutely. So, again, you can find uh, more about Adam at adamreimer.com. And it's R-E-I-M. Oh, adamreimer.me. 
Dot me. There you go. Yeah. Thank you so Adam much. Reamer that owns AdamReamer.com is <laughs> in Boston. He's a really nice guy. Um, I've actually become friends with all the other Adam Reamers I could find, and the majority of us are in online marketing, so it's kind of funny. Oh, you're hilarious. Uh, <laughs> it was something I just did one day. I reached out to all of them and started phone calls with half of them. <laughs> we all actually look pretty similar, too, so I'm really kind of curious what the hell was wrong with my family back two generations. <laughs> Uh, I will leave that for another show. So that's hilarious. That's good. So, all right, Avin. Thank you so much. And I can see we are out of time. Keep in mind that uh, anything you missed that mentioned uh, was mentioned here by Adam today, that we do take all the show notes for you and include links to everything mentioned here today. And you'll find the show notes for this episode at jamesmartell.com forward slash AB466. Uh, I also invite you to come and hang out with us here every Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific time here on Cranberry Radio. And a final reminder that if you'd like to be alerted each week to new episodes, take 30 seconds right now and send a blank email to affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com and that will get you alerted every single week. That's affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com. And the Adam, thanks again. And to our listeners, thanks for listening to another edition of the Affiliate Buzz. opinions expressed are those of the hosts and their guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of Cranberry News Marketing and Cranberry.fm. Rebroadcasts or retransmission of this content without proper consent is prohibited.